Lewis. Tonight, a manslaughter charge laid over a gimpy labourer's death. A nine-year-old boy bitten by a neighbour's dog. And a man robbed of cash after using an ATM. Good evening. First tonight, police have charged an electrical contractor with manslaughter more than four years after the death of gimpy man Jason Garrels at a Clermont building site. The 20-year-old worker was electrocuted while carrying a switchboard box. A man's been robbed in broad daylight of cash he withdrew from an ATM. Police have released these images of a man who may be able to help them with their inquiries. Police say around 8.30 on Friday morning, he watched a customer withdraw money from a Commonwealth Bank ATM at Kiwana Shopping World. He then allegedly approached him and threatened him into handing over the money. He's described as Caucasian with mousy brown hair and a thin build. Economies react badly to political uncertainty. After 10 weeks of campaigning and counting, we finally have a government and business can get back to business. The Sunshine Coast stuck with the LNP, so our federal MPs all have a seat at the government table. They're political newbies, promising a new perspective and reinvigorated approach to politics, and that includes electronic voting. After a monumental near 50-day federal election campaign and another week after that without a result, it now appears that our three local federal members of the LNP party are confident they will form a majority coalition government. But the question now remains of whether that confidence will extend to consumers and the broader business community here on the Sunshine Coast. Business hates uncertainty and that's not just uncertainty waiting for a result but uncertainties that come with minority governments. Uh, we are very supportive of small businesses and, and certainly I am as well having come from a, a 30 year small business background. After 16 years in barristers chambers Andrew Wallace is relocating to his electorate office. One of three first time LNP members on their way to Canberra. We will be hunting as a pack, uh, you know there should be no doubt about that. And so Lou Andrew and I will be fighting, we will be hunting as a pack. On message, but possibly overdoing the pack thing. The LNP L platers are also as one on electronic voting. It has to be safe and it has to be secure. Uh, it's an easier decision in principle than it is in practice, but I think we should be exploring it. My very strong preference would be that we move towards an electronic system. The 2016 election has also seen a lift in support for minor parties. In Fisher, the Greens enjoyed a 4% swing and the party did just as well in Fairfax. One Nation took nearly 10% in Fairfax, while further north in Wide Bay, they grabbed almost 15%. It's about the same vote that Palmer got in Wide Bay at the last election, so that vote had to go to some someone, and uh, in this election it went to One Nation. There is certainly a level of discontent, I accept that, with the, with the major parties, and it's up to us. We've got to learn our lessons from that. Lincoln Humphreys, Win News. Stay with Win coming up after the break. Community donations to help a life-changing service, and Coolum Beach transformed into a racetrack. Dave's returned and is here with Sport and Falcons coach Craig Inderbritson, not too happy with the touch judges. Furious, Paul. That would be an understatement. Good evening to you. Nice to see you again. We're going to show you why next, plus a full wrap of Rugby League's All Girls Challenge and the Clippers are champs in the latest Clash of the Coast. Good evening. Rugby League to start. Sunshine Coast coach Craig Ingebrigtsen has blasted the touch judges following his side's 28-8 loss against Redcliffe. Ingebrigtsen said, despite the scoreline, key calls early in the match cost the Falcons. And just quickly, a big congratulations to Sunshine Coast Grammar First 15, Captain Tate McDermott. He's been or has become the college's first Australian schoolboys representative. Tate was picked for Queensland Ones, the schoolboys. has now been picked in the Barbarian squad and they will face the Tongan schoolboys in September. Pretty good effort. Congratulations to him and you on your marriage and welcome back. Thank you. All right, stick around up next. Corinne's got the weather forecast. Tonight's weather, brought to you by Alfred Smallwood from Uncle Alfred's Men's Group. And Yui, we get you. 
Good evening. Well, a cloudy and mild start to the week. Some deceptively powerful surf conditions over the next couple of days. And we're also expecting some rain later this week too. I'll have more in just a moment. Tonight's viewer photo. Now, this is thanks to Peter Marshall, a shot of the crystal clear waters of Noosa National Park, taken on a much clearer day. It's certainly a beautiful part of our region. If you have a photo you would like to share, you can email weather at windqld.com.au or you can send it to me on Twitter. Temperatures today. Now, Rainbow Beach got down to 17 degrees, 17 the minimum for Talara. Gympie dropping to 10 degrees. Noosa 22 is the top today, the same for Yamundi. Nambour dropping to 12 degrees this morning. Maroochid or a top of 22 degrees. Five for Jimna this morning. Mullaney reaching 23 degrees. 21 the top for Beerbarum. And Kalandra reaching 22 degrees. Checking the charts, there's cloud over western and southern Queensland with a low pressure trough. We're seeing patchy light rain. There's low cloud along the coast as well with moist onshore winds triggering a few showers. There's a high that's in the Tasman that extends a ridge across Queensland. A surface drop over the southwest is moving east. It'll move into eastern Queensland tomorrow. Warmer air will lie across the state ahead of the trough and cooler air in its wake. So tomorrow, fine and mostly sunny. That's in the north. High cloud over southern Queensland though with some light patchy rain. Temperatures will be well above the July average for much of the state and cooler for the southwest. Also deceptively powerful surf conditions developing for southern beaches. Locally tomorrow partly cloudy. Uh, winds will be north to northwesterly reaching 20 kilometres per hour. The Sunshine Coast heading for a top of 25 degrees. Gympie getting down to 11 in the morning and Nambour heading for a top of 25 degrees as well. Moving along to the coastal waters, north to northwesterly winds, 10 to 15 knots, reaching up to 20 knots. That's offshore south of Maroochydore in the evening. Seas around 1 metre, 1.5 offshore south of Maroochydore by the early evening. And a swell south, uh, east to southeasterly swell, I should say, to 1.5 metres inshore, 2 metres offshore. Here's the Tata Dari. Noosa's low tide. We're expecting that around 10 to 8 in the morning. Maroochydore, that high tide, sitting at around 20 to 3 tomorrow afternoon. You can expect Kalandra's low tide just before 8 o'clock in the morning. On our beaches for a wave, try the Kiwana Pocket or Sunshine Beach tomorrow. Sunrise, we're expecting that at 6.36, sunset 11 minutes past. And here's the outlook for the next seven days. 25, mostly sunny tomorrow. Wednesday, plenty of sunshine, heading for a top of only 20 degrees though. 18, the top for Thursday and Friday. We're also expecting rain at times. And on the weekend, we're expecting rain as well. 19 for Saturday, 20 for Sunday. And that rain could continue into Monday at this stage. Paul and Dave. Corinne, thank you very much for that. Before we go, remember you can follow the team on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks for choosing Win News for your local news. The project is next. We'll see you tomorrow night at 6. Good night. Good night. has been a Win News presentation. Win News, Regional Australia's number one news source.